So, does gear matter? Yeah. Well, but actually, no, not really. Okay, what the hell do I mean by that? Well, I think, simply put, that gear does matter. To an extent. When I say that gear matters, to an extent, what I actually mean is that it matters just about as much as you would actually need in order to start creating. Which essentially just boils down to having a camera, a battery for the camera, a charger for the battery for the camera, and a lens. That's it. By that definition, if you really think about it, even your phone probably fits that description, and that's exactly the point. As long as you have something to capture images and videos with, no matter how poorly, you have something to start with, and that's the point. It's just starting. You don't need to have the fanciest or the best of the best gear to get started. You just don't. You might actually be worse off if you started with the best of the best gear from the get-go. More on that later. But my point is that the sooner that you start, the sooner you're actually going to have more time practicing and actually getting better at shooting and getting to know what works for you, what doesn't, what you like, what you don't like, and most importantly, finding your creative style and your creative voice as an artist. One massive upside that I found with shooting with not so great gear at the beginning is that it put me in a position where I had to learn how to work around the flaws and the things that I didn't like with the images that I captured with the limited resources that I had. Things that could otherwise be fixed by better gear, but since I'm only stuck with the things that I have, I had to learn how to work around those flaws in my own unique, weird, makeshift kind of way. And the thing is, even though I make that sound like such a silver lining in a situation that is otherwise completely not ideal, I think that it provides such a high value for anybody who's growing as a creative. Because shooting with the gear that you already have and learning how to work around those limitations really teaches you a lot about yourself, both as a person and as an artist. It really will stretch you, but trust me that it will be worth it if you keep going down the line. But I already know some of you are thinking of your own objections that are already going on in your head. Some of you might be going something like, well, if that were true, then why are there so many different kinds of cameras that are so expensive and so many high-end lenses that I can't afford? And why do you, why do I, purchase and use those same items myself. Well, that's the second part of why gear matters to an extent. Like I said before, shooting with what you have and just starting really gives you a prime opportunity to get to learn who you are as an artist. But eventually there will come an inevitable point where you grow creatively to the point where you actually feel like you're being barred creatively and limited by the gear that you have with the skills that you've already developed. Now, that feeling isn't 100% true 100% of the time. We do have a tendency to want gear and convince ourselves that we need it when we actually don't. But if you really feel compelled and you strongly think that the gear itself is barring you, is limiting you from being as creative as you want to be, instead of the other way around where it's actually your limited skills that are barring you from being able to maximize what you already have, then I highly encourage you to definitely consider upgrading. This is the point where gear will matter. I said earlier that it might be more detrimental if you started using amazing gear from the get-go, and I think that's truer than a lot of us tend to realize. Now, this might be a hot take, so hot take alert. But personally, honestly, I feel like starting off with better gear is actually severely more limiting than if you started with the gear that you already have with you. Now, that is not at all to say that great, amazing high-end camera gear is bad for you. My point is, most of the time, starting out with really high-end gear risks almost becoming a sort of crutch for a limited skill set. And because of that, you might end up relying more on the gear and its capabilities itself instead of the skills, the creativity, and ingenuity that you have within yourself as an artist. And essentially, your work can come at risk to becoming defined by your gear and the technology that you have and the capabilities that they have instead of your own artistry and skill as a creative and as a person. Now, if you really feel like buying amazing gear from the get-go is the move for you, good on you, go for it. 
As for me, I started shooting with my mother's 8 megapixel Canon point and shoot way back in the day, shooting action figures and doing stop motion videos. And then when I graduated elementary school, I was gifted a phone with a 5 whopping 5 megapixel camera. And then from then on out, I just shot with whatever phone I ended up upgrading to. And then to record films and videos and projects for school, I started borrowing my uncle's camcorder. And then after being interested in this thing since I was in elementary, shooting action figures, I finally purchased my first official camera in 2017. And that camera is what I'm shooting this video with right now, the Sony a6300. At the time, it wasn't the highest end camera in the world, it didn't have the best specs, but its specs were definitely amazing for the price. And that's precisely the reason why I bought it. I bought it with the idea of future-proofing so that I could use this camera and grow with this camera without having to worry about having to upgrade for a very long time. Now, that's technically my first camera, and I know that all of that seems to contradict everything I've said previously, but I think it actually perfectly exemplifies it. You have to take into account the nine years that it actually took me just camera hopping with whatever I could lay my hands on, even borrowing friends' DSLRs whenever I had the chance, before I purchased my first ever camera. I deliberately chose that though, because I wanted to grow as an artist with this camera over the years. You don't have to do what I did, you especially don't have to buy the crappiest camera that you can find, nor do you have to buy the best of the best creme de la creme gear that you can afford. You make do. That's it. You make do with what you have. Just as an aside, the majority of the lenses that I love to shoot with and that I own to this day are actually vintage lenses that are below $80 a piece. I say that just to prove the point that you don't even need the most expensive lenses in order to achieve the looks that I've achieved myself. And if you like my stuff, I shoot with vintage lenses that don't even cost over $100. So there's that. So, what better way to show examples than to demonstrate it through my work and the work of my friends? Exhibit A, fellow Asian and photography genius, Canon fam of casual portraits. If you look at these images, you might think, oh wow, these are real nice. Yeah, they're real nice. You know what's also real nice? These images were shot with only two lenses, and those two lenses are just a kit lens and a vintage Helios 44-2, which is a really cheap lens and actually, honestly, one of my favorite vintage lenses ever. Now, exhibit B. These photos come from my friend and former photography apprentice slash mentee, James. These photos that I'm starting off with, James actually shot with a 10 megapixel Canon Rebel XS, which upon googling, you can buy with a kit lens for 80 bucks. These images he didn't actually shoot with a kit lens, he shot them with a Yongnuo 50mm f1.8, which is a really nice lens for the price, which is around 50 to 60 dollars. And as a testament to what I said earlier, you eventually, inevitably, grow as an artist, which in James's case, led him to upgrade to a Canon 77D. These images that I'm showing you right now are from that. Mind you, he didn't get better because he bought better gear. He bought better gear because his skills got better. Exhibit C. My friend Parker still loves and shoots with his Canon 5D Mark I. The 5D Mark I is a 12 megapixel camera from 2005. Think about that real quick and realize that the device you're watching this on, which is likely your phone, probably has a higher megapixel count than his main photo shooter. As a second camera for video and photo, he uses a Panasonic G7. Bear in mind, the G7, along with James's 77D, are a bit more pricey compared to the things that I've mentioned before. But I can speak for the G7, and I know that it is well worth the price. If you don't believe me on that claim, and you actually want visual proof, then Parker actually has his own YouTube channel that you should go and check out for his, well, bloody stunning visuals that he has in each of his videos over at Parker Field Cinematography. So go check his stuff out. And on that note, go check out everybody that I featured on this video, because if you like my work, then you will probably enjoy theirs as well. All the links are down below in the description. Thank you to my friends for allowing me to feature their work on this video. It was really helpful, you did me a solid. I hope you liked those examples, and I hope that they proved and showed the point that you don't need the fanciest gear to get the shot. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours. You don't have to do what I do, you don't have to do what Canon, James, or Parker do, and you don't have to have what we have. Look, it's perfectly fine if you've only tried out photography or filmmaking for the past week 
or less, and you already feel like you want to get a Nikon Z7, or a Sony A7R4, or a Canon 1DX Mark II. Like, if you feel like that's the best course of action for you, and you can actually afford that, go ahead, knock yourself out. You're making me jealous already. <laughs> but for everyone, really, don't feel the pressure to immediately get those things or to immediately improve so quickly at a super fast rate, you don't need to worry about being perfect in terms of what you have or what you can do. Just start. Just bloody start. That's all you need. Just start and keep going. Clearly by now, or at least I hope, I am a massive proponent of just starting and going with what you already have. It's going to be fun for you. But admittedly, it's also going to be quite stressful and hellish trying to figure out how to capture great images and great footage with not so great and limited resources. But the point of all the good and the bad boil down to the same thing. Your growth, your improvement, getting familiar with angles, knowing the framing techniques that you enjoy, knowing what subjects you even want to shoot with, and most especially figuring out if this is something that you're really passionate about and that you really want to dive deeper into. So, does gear matter? Yeah, to an extent. Only as much as you need it to, and never more than you can afford it to. Look, I have so much more that I want to share about this topic, so I'm actually thinking of turning this into a series where I walk you through different areas and different topics in which gear matters and doesn't matter. I want to be able to demonstrate my personal philosophy. My point, the point, is to make photography and filmmaking accessible to anyone with no excuses, not even for myself. I hope you consider subscribing, I hope you enjoy this video, thank you so much for watching, my name is Nicholas, cheers.